alaikum everyone today i am going to teach you about square and cube roots in this lesson students will learn how to describe principal roots and tell if they are rational or irrational numbers so first i am going to tell you about what are square numbers and square roots so the product of a number when multiplied by itself is called square numbers for example 1 into 1 is 1 2 into 2 is 4 3 into 3 is 9 and 4 into 4 is 16 and so on so if a number is multiplied by itself those numbers are called square numbers and the inverse of squaring a number is called square root so opposite of squaring a number that is called square root what is principal square root principal square root of a number is a positive square root and is represented by this symbol a negative square root is represented by negative square root the symbol plus and minus square root is used to represent both square roots. It means it represents both plus and minus. This symbol is called radical. And for example, I am going to write here 4. The quantity inside the radical that is called radicand. So point to ponder, the small number to the left of the root is the index. In a square root index is uh, understood to be 2 in other words this symbol is same as this one cube roots a number that is raised to the third power to form the product is called a cube root of that product the symbol for the cube root is this you are going to write this small 3 over here and indicates a cube root since 2 raised to power 3 equals to 8 so inverse of squaring a number is called square root so uh, is called cube root so cube root mean cube of 8 equals to 2 point to ponder the symbol for the cube root is this one so we are going to write cube in square root we don't mention 2 over there but in cube root we mention 3 over here what is a square root let's identify if a number is a perfect square or not a perfect square for example 16 is a perfect square but 21 is not a perfect square why 16 is a perfect square because 4 into 4 is 16 but we don't have the number which is multiplied by itself to get 21. So square numbers or perfect squares have two square roots. One is positive, one is negative. For example, square root of 9. You can see 3 and minus 3. The square root of 9 is 3 and minus 3. Because 3 times 3 is 9 and minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. Same goes with 64. Square root of 64, 8 and minus 8. Because 8 times 8 is 64 and minus 8 into it minus 8 is 64. So, the point which you have to keep it in your mind, square numbers of perfect squares have two square roots, one positive and one negative. Now, let's, I am going to explain you what is a principal root. Actually, principal root is the positive square root. This is very important. Positive square root is the principal root. Now, for example, what is the principal root of 49? Before I will tell you what is the principal root of 49, first I am going to find the square root of 49. So what is the square root of 49? That is 7 and minus 7, you know. So two square roots are there, positive and negative. Remember the principal root is the positive square root. So its answer is 7. Its answer is 7, not minus 7. Let's have one more example. 64. So what is the square root of 64? That is 8 and minus 8. Yes. You can see over here, 8 and minus 8 is the square root of 64 because two square roots are there. One is positive, one is negative. But what is the principal root? That is a positive principal root is the positive root. So the answer is 8. Rational or irrational. Now you are going to tell me that if principal root is rational or irrational. So principal root may be rational or irrational. Rational are numbers that can be expressed as a quotient a over b of two integers. And irrational are numbers that cannot be represented as quotient of a and b of two integers. To determine whether principal root is rational or irrational, determine if the radicand is a perfect square or not. L let's have a few examples. Principal root is rational or irrational. If the radicand is a perfect square, then the principal root is a rational. If the radicand is not a perfect square, then the principal root is irrational. So for example, square root of 25 is 5 or minus 5. And you know the principal root is 5, positive. That is the principal root. 
Now you have to tell whether it's rational or irrational. Yes, it's rational because it's a perfect square. That's why it's a rational. So the point to note, if the radicand is a perfect square, then the principal root is a rational. Now, let's solve a few more examples. State whether the given radicand is rational or irrational. Square root of 4, that you know 2 into 2. So it's a rational because it's a perfect square. Square root of 49, is it a perfect square? Yes, it's a perfect square. So it's a rational. Square root of 70, it's not a perfect square. So that's why it's a irrational number. So remember, if the radicand is a perfect square, then radicand is a rational. Now, it's your turn. You are going to solve these questions. Tell whether each of the following is a rational or irrational. If it's rational, give the principal root. So you are going to tell me whether the square root of 16 is a rational or irrational? Square root of 11, is it a rational or irrational? Square root of 49, is it a rational or irrational? Square root of 36, is it a rational or irrational? Square root of 50, is it a rational or irrational? So if it's a perfect square, it's a rational. If it's not a perfect square, it's irrational. I am going to recap my lesson. Rational numbers can be written as a fraction. A rational number cannot be written as a fraction because it's a non-terminating decimal. If it's a decimal, that does not re repeat. The square roots of all perfect squares are rational. The square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares are called irrational. I hope you like my video. Thank you so much.